Dean, I stood up on stage. Right. We, had a, we had a breaking point in our movement where we had neo-Nazis trying to attach themselves to what we stand for. So I took the opportunity to stand on stage, call them out, name them. When I got off stage, I was confronted by people wearing Combat 18 t-shirts, at which point I headbutted him. Because right. he was seat hiling and shouting, and shouting at booze. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then, when I got back to the coach, I was confronted by another 30 Nazis. I get many death threats on a weekly basis by Nazis. We've done more to confront na is Nazism and Islamism. So are you an anti-Nazi movement? I am. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And Islamism and Nazism are opposite sides of the same coin. Don't I've grown up in Luton. Some of the best people I've met through growing up are Muslim. Some of my mates are Muslim. You had Butch Vassell on this show last week. I was out with his son on Thursday night, okay? I don't hate all Muslims. Muslims are the first victims of Islam and extremist Islam. That's what's happening. I don't hate Muslims at all. And, and I've, I've said that from day one. Now I'm, I'm talking about Islam. I'm not talking about Muslims. I'm talking about Islam. But I say we've got a Sikh, a Sikh, a Sikh division. I don't have to be a, Jew. a, Jew, a Jewish division, a Hindu division. And, and excuse me. What are hoping to accomplish? Yeah. I was hoping to wake up the major three parties to realising the, the anger, the fear, and that's what people say, we, we, we do all this out of hatred. We don't do any of this out of hatred. We do it out of love, love for our culture, love for Christianity, um, love for our kids' futures. Critics say that you're a bunch of hooligans and that's about it. Well, well how do you respond to that? Um, in the sense that we're not hooligans, it's just people who ain't going to back down. People who are prepared to defend ourselves. Are you all ready to use violence? No, we're not, no. There um, has been examples of, of violent things happening at demonstrations. There was a shop uh, in Leicester that was attacked. Yeah, yeah, one shot. And also balls thrown at police vans, injured police officers. Yeah. How, what, what do you, I mean, you as the leader. Uh, yeah, we, can, we condemn that every time. And, um, but, but what I will tell people is they don't understand the anger, the desperation, the fear, the frustration that is, that's in our towns and cities that we're living with, living next to Islamic ghettos. Knowing people that have been abused by Muslim gangs, knowing people that have been killed by Muslim gangs, knowing, knowing all these things, we're the people that live down here at the bottom, amongst it. So when those people go on the street, every so often there's going to be an explosion of frustration. EDL is being ac accused of being racist. How do you stand on that? Um, I ask what race is Islam? What race are Muslims? Um, we're here to combat a fascist ideology. We promote black and white, we promote integration, and we promote non-violence. That's what we do. This is constant, it's going on all the time. I will be attacked again. And when people said, well, how come, would you have got out of the car, or how come you didn't report it? I have to have the mindset that I'm going to continue walking through Luton. I haven't got no paid bodyguards or protection as yet, so I have to walk through my hometown. So I have to be of the mindset, um, if I run once, I'll be running for the next 20 years. So I'm not running, and I will continue to walk through, and if any, anyone wants to try and attack me, I'll defend myself. And that's the mindset I've had to take. It's either that, or pack my bags and leave Luton, which is what the police, the police have sat me and my family down, they've given us official Wasman warnings, saying that our advice to you and your family is to leave Luton, leave for the foreseeable future, take your children with you, do not come back to this town, because we cannot guarantee your safety. Now, after being told that, I've had to make the decision of what do I do? Do I go into hiding? Do I, do I allow them to intimidate me into silence and um, scare my family? So I've took the instance that I'm not going to go into hiding. I'm not going to be silent. So I'm going to continue coming out and exposing the truth about Islam and standing up for my community, which is, which is what I've done. So group, um, they call themselves the Northwest Infidels. They're a group of backward, inbred, Nazi sympathising scum who we have kicked out of our organisation. I'm not going to even sit on the fence on this one. They are. They're backward. They hate anything that moves that's not white. <laughs> it's quite comical. They're, they're pathetic. Um, they can't even see their own faults. But we've, we, they were kicked out of our organisation uh, a year, probably a year ago. That what they were doing, they were jumping on the back of our organisation, but not actually giving us any reason to publicly kick them out. When we got the chance, we come out, we said, this is who they are, we exposed them at a demonstration, and we forcefully removed them. They have now dedicated their time and their life to going against me, because the path they wanted to the English Defence League to go down was a similar path to the backward National Front. Um, an ideology which is identical to Islamism. It's just opposite sides of the same coin. We, we're not going to be hypocrites and allow that to flourish. We will combat Islamism, we will combat Nazism. I hate Nazis as much as I hate Islamists. I say it time and time again that we, the only reason why the English Defence League has been such a, such a success is because we are reaching out to mainstream Britain, to, to normal, ordinary people who may, as you, as you say, sometimes be likely lads or hardened lads, but are not racist, backward, far-right extremists, right. um, which is what these, these groups are, who've, who thankfully we've managed to have... I think the movement was a breaking point probably a year ago right. with all these groups jumping on the back, and then it, 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 ha it had to come to a head. It came to a head at our Blackman demonstration. Okay. We kicked them out, we got rid of them, 
and now I'm a number one target right. from. Let's not listen to what Darren, Darren Hobson says. Let's listen to what and this, well, this, he, let's listen to what this psychopath says in his manifesto. In his right. manifesto, he states let's that we that, have non-white members, and he sure. is ideologically so far apart from us. He calls us naive fools. The media are not reporting this. Our relationship with this he, man is completely opposite. Sure. We he encourage integration. He. He had this isn't quotes. This is from his manifesto, no. not media, not Darren Hobson. No, this is I'm from the man himself. The EDL harshly condemns any movement that uses terror as a tool, such as mine. This is why we and the view the EDL as naive fools. The EDL is a democratic movement. They still believe that the democratic system can solve British problems. They have non-European background members, African right. and Asian, etc., etc. In a democracy, you use your democratic rights. When you're aggrieved, you peacefully protest. That's what the English Defence League's done. We get condemned for trying to peacefully protest. Yeah. We, we, we are an anti... Uh, we, we, we condemn all extremism. We condemn all violence. We are exactly what would you, you would want as a grassroots organisation so, to... A job, because all these government organisations don't have a representative from the working class community. That representative is me. That representative is the English Defence League telling you how we feel. And we, and we are against all extremism and all violence, but you need to listen. Because, we, God forbid, this ever happens on British soil. Could a Muslim join the English Defence League? Of course they could, yeah. Of course well, they could. And yet you say you're not against Muslims. No. They could join your organisation, but you are against Islam. We're against Islam taken in its 7th century barbaric form. Well, Which, your when direct taken, quote is, I'm not against Muslims, just Islam. Against militant Islam. And when I say Islam, taken in its 7th century barbaric form. If Islam was to evolve, which it needs to evolve, right. to, fit in with, to fit in with Western democracy, which is clearly not, clearly there's a problem. Clearly, the English Defence League is a phenomenon that swept this country. And with, with the issues I'm talking about, Jeremy, if I ask you, do you know anyone that's hooked on heroin sold to them by Muslim gangs? You probably don't. I do. Do you know any beautiful girls that you went to school with that are now wearing a burqa that, that don't see their family? Probably don't. I do. Do you know anyone who's been murdered by a Muslim gang? You probably don't. I do. Do you know any 15-year-old girls that you know that you've grown up with that have so, been raped or pimped? You don't. So I don't expect these you are to all, understand the these issues. These are all We're talking about I'm members of the community. white community doing all sorts of atrocious things. Yeah, but not, 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 not 24-year-old groups of 10 of them hanging around outside school gates. You've never seen a white gang? And purposely targeting... You've never seen a white gang? Are, are we going to pretend that Muslim groups are not out there purposely targeting our youth and pimping them? Are, are we going to pretend it's not happening? Not well, I, I sat and watched Question Time, and I, when I watched Question Time, all I could see our political leaders was trying to explain that Jack Straw could have dressed it up a little bit better. And, rather, and talking about these girls like they're statistics. They're not so, statistics. These girls are... Well, who's, whose daughters do you think these are? The, whose sisters? They're ours in working-class towns and communities. And people are right. fed up with what's going on. We're be, and it is being ignored. For 20 years, our, 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 our councillors and the, and, the, and the leaders from the Islamic community have conspired with the police to not deal with Muslim pimping gangs. They've allowed systematic rape of our youth right. for the fact of being scared to be called a racist. Although you know, Any Muslim who takes the Quran seriously in is, in your view... An any enemy Muslim, of this society. No, any Muslim that takes it in a 7th century barbaric form. In that case, oh, so you believe in some sort of revised Quran, do you? I believe they need to revise it. Later parts of his manifesto, he says the EDO are in fact anti-fascist, anti-racist, anti-Nazi. He says our ideologies are, mi are miles apart and they never can, they can never be reconciled. He describes us as naive fools. He says that he will use acts of terror and we will condemn acts of terror. We are anti-fascist, we con condemn all violence, our prayers and sympathies with the victim of what this horrible monster has done. Front page of the mail. This, you yeah, know, well, this well, debate is being had. No, we don't need the, the English the, Defence the, League The debate's to force not it. being had because as soon as anyone tries to comment about it, you're an extremist. The English Defence League's not but extremist. But the Daily Mail, uh, people, that's, a, that's a reasonable news call, story. People are calling us extremists. We condemn all violence. There's nothing extreme about us. You just, call, you just introduced us as far right. Yeah. What sort of far right organisation has a Jewish division, a lesbian and gay division, a Sikh division, a Hindu division? Yeah. There's nothing far right about our organisation. Yeah. We we are against the spread of Islamism. This is a serious threat to our nation. It's a serious threat to our kids' futures. And as soon as you say anything, you're suppressed and you're beaten down with a racist okay. stick. But at the end of the day, there's an undercurrent of, of anger and frustration. It needs to be spoke about. You need to give a platform. They're trying to take our democratic rights to even protest over these issues away. And all we want to do is express how we're feeling and how worried and scared we are in our communities by the problems that Islam's causing. So people need to realise the frustration, the anger, the alienation to us in our own towns and communities in the problems with Islam. And you can't suppress it. You need to get, give a platform to it so people feel that they, they can express themselves without this racist tag, automatic racist tag. I'm not a racist. I'm not fascist in any sort of way. I hate
hate racism and fascism. Islamism and Nazism are opposite sides of the same but coin. You're, you're... We're marching in Tower Hamlets on the 3rd of September, and I believe the Home Secretary will ban it. She's banned three of our demonstrations. They have never banned an Islamic organisation's rallies or demonstrations, no matter how extreme. They can uh, burn poppies, they can attack yeah. our troops, do what they want. There's a two-tier system across this country, one rule for them, another rule for us. It needs to change. Many of these politicians don't understand what we're talking about because they don't live at the bottom. They don't live in these working class communities. We're affected by it on a daily basis. And as soon as you try and talk up about it or even have a discussion about it, you're beaten down with this racist tag, this far right. There, anyone that calls us far right, there's nothing far right about the English Defence League at all. We're not a far right organisation. We have a Sikh division, we have a Jewish division, we have a lesbian and gay division. Um, there's nothing far right about us. And, and that's a tactic used in order to stifle the debate, in order to stifle and silence what we're saying. Let's just discriminate, let's just label them as far-right extremists and that's what they're doing to us that's what anyone that's found with any racist uh, racist racist views which don't fit our agenda and fit what we stand for they're kicked out immediately which is um, you find racists in the Labour Party you find racists in the police force don't get me wrong there probably are some racists within the English Defence League but when they when they raise their head they're kicked straight out how many female middle middle-aged school teachers are going to come out on the street and oppose militant Islam when we all know the consequences it's a violent reaction you're not going to get many so the people that were willing to step forward and take to the streets with the brave people, the fearless people, the people who are of the mindset, we're not backing down. You're not beating us off the streets and you're not beating us into silence. Now, if that stereotypically comes across as a so-called football hooligan, which basically means you're a young lad who's not going to be prepared to back down, that's all we are. It's like myself, I'm, I don't claim to sit here and polish my halo. I'm a likely lad. I'm, I haven't been an angel, I never will be an angel, but at the same time, we're standing up for what's right. And I believe that the people that we're attracting, when you say that, even like myself, the upbringing we've had and what we've seen in towns and cities like Luton, it gives us more of a qualification to explain the problems around Islam than someone who's gone to a university and read about it in a book. I'm from Luton. Um, some of the best people I've met growing up are Muslim. Some of my uh, good friends growing up have been Muslim. My, our problem is with aspects and certain parts of the ideology of Islam. And certain parts of it need highlighting how, how backward and deranged certain parts of it are. And with fascism and Islamofascism, which is exactly what it is. Islam is a fascist ideology that's masquerading as a religion. But at the same time, we do recognise there are some great Muslims out there. And what we would like to see is, I keep asking myself, when will Muslims take to the streets against their fellow Muslims that are bringing their religion into disrepute? Because we're not seeing it. All we ever see is them take to the streets against us when we're trying to talk out against these issues. But yet you've got Muslims last week on September the 11th absolutely um, uh, uh, terrorising people's memories of the war dead and going down and insulting the whole of America, insulting the whole of Britain. And there's no reaction from the Muslim community. We, we don't see any public outrage, but yet we see public outrage over a few cartoons. We see public worldwide out outrage. So we want to know when are the moderate Muslims going to come out and really confront the extremists within their ideology. It's about the Jewish thing. I live in Luton and um, we got no a Jew could not walk from one end of the Islamic community to the other with a skull cap. Now this is the year 2011 in Britain. That's not on. Um, I, I saw uh, some Orthodox Jews, this was about four or five years ago, and I saw about six police officers around them, and they were walking with them, and I thought, I wonder what was going on there. And then it clicked. They're getting a police escort to be able to walk down the street in Luton. And that's shocking. I'll be the first. I say it to the English Defence League all the time. You ha we have to point out you have to be there balanced. are some great Muslims, yeah? All right? But and that's nice when... to hear you say, because I've never heard yeah. you say that. I say it in every interview I do, and I think but they don't well, play it. You're very... You won't play it. The thing that people don't think you're this evil moron you're not an angel by any stretch of the imagination I'm, and, and that's the main thing i always say, say is i'm i'm not an angel i don't claim to be sitting here polishing my halo i'm a normal lad who's from luton and i, I love luton and i want what's best for luton and i'm sorry but the complete spread of islamism across this town is not good for it agree in Shirolo. yeah 100 percent. do you agree in Shirolo? 100 do you agree in the cutting off of hands only if it's absolutely okay necessary. so you agree in you agree in are older men sleeping with younger children, having sexual no, intercourse? No, I agree with like men sleeping with women that are older. Nine years old. Older than Ten years old. No, Eleven years. That's your Shuwa law, bro. Eleven years old. That's your law. If the woman is... That's your law. If, if the woman's bleeding... It's if, no, 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 if, right? if the woman's bleeding, she's 11 years old, you can have sex with her. But is your goal in modern Britain to emulate the Prophet Muhammad? My personal goal is to, is to follow the Prophet Muhammad as well. Precisely. There you go. That which is correct. What's Just, your goal? What do you want to achieve? I want peace, but we haven't got it, bro. If all Muslims think like you and want Sharia law, this is not going to work. We want Sharia law that is correct, that's applied with wisdom, by people of knowledge. 
It would be a really nice bloke here and we can agree all we want here, but when you say, do you want to try a lawyer, he says, yeah. Absolutely. For me, that's you the end of the conversation. You can't close your ears, you Absolutely. can't. You can't close you can. your ears after okay. that. Because where are you going to no, go? No, 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 it's his it's belief. Yeah. No, it's his belief. What I'm saying is, that's never going to work. You'd walk away from that saying he was a really nice, moderate Muslim. But I think he was. Yeah, but he still wants to write law. But he's not imposing it on anyone. But he will, saying... he will when there's enough of them. 